Welcome back. In West Africa, three presidential candidates in Mali are claiming to have enough votes to move on to a runoff election. Opposition candidate Sumaila Sisi's campaign manager announced that though official results have not been released, Mr. Sisi and President Ibrahim Babaka Keita will be the last two candidates heading for a second round. In most of Mali, the vote was peaceful and relatively well organized, with polls opening and closing on time. Most people who were enrolled and who turned up to vote were also able to do so. A third party in Mali's presidential election is claiming to have made it through to a run of vote, further confusing the poll already beset by violence that stopped thousands from casting their ballots. Spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance for Peace says that its candidate, gold magnate Aliu Diallo, has come second, winning enough votes in Sunday's election to force a two-candidate second-round poll next month. Today, after the vote, and after 65 percent of the votes have been counted, we see that our candidate is qualified for the second round. But we also witnessed irregularities during the vote. We have set up a reliable centralizing system which allows us today to give numbers which can be put into question and we are ready to defend these numbers in front of the relevant authorities. The head of the European Union Electoral Observation Mission for Mali renewed calls for a detailed list of the 644 polling stations where voters were not able to cast their votes due to security fears. Candidates are forbidden by law to announce results before they are officially released, but rival parties have given differing outlooks based on their own polling, raising tensions in the desert country where ethnic and Islamist violence have become a constant threat. What really matters for us is the conditions in which the vote happened. And we are saying today that it happened in acceptable conditions. We call on all political leaders to accept the results. But it is not up to us to comment on what one or the other is saying before the results are known. The Democratic Alliance's statement follows similar claims from incumbent President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, who is seeking a second term and believes he is in the lead, and rival Somaila Sisi, whose camp said it has made it to a second round against Mr. Keita. Former rebel leader Jean Pierre Bemba is back in his home country, the Democratic Republic of Congo, after he was acquitted of war crimes by the International Criminal Court. Mr. Bemba, who fought a decades long battle at the ICC to clear his name, has vowed to contest presidential elections due in December. Thousands of people took to the streets to welcome him. His supporters were also at the airport in the capital, Kinshasa, to receive him. However, they were dismissed by the police who fired tear gas at the crowd. The government of Rwanda says it will look for new markets to export its clothing after U.S. President Donald Trump's administration followed through on threats to suspend Kigali's ability to ship clothing duty-free to the United States. This is due to a trade dispute over Kigali's increased tariffs on American-used clothing. The move initially threatened in March and confirmed on Monday was seen by many in Washington and Africa as foreshadowing how the Trump administration planned to apply its America First trade ideology on the continent. Claire Akamanzi, CEO of the Rwandan Development Board, told reporters on Tuesday that companies producing garments for export were already approaching European buyers. Yes, uh, we expect some Rwandan companies to be affected, particularly CNH. Uh, we have a plan for them. We have engaged them, we've discussed with them, and we will be uh, helping them with the transition to new markets. Um, we already know one of the investors, one of the investors in, in clothing is already looking at European buyers, which has already sent t samples to Europe. And so we have a, a facility that we put in place to help them within the transition uh, to find new markets. And that support is going to include uh, some of its uh, financial support to pay for some of the the, uh, the cost they will cut to adjust to new markets. Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda and Uganda all increased duties on used clothing and shoes in 2016 to nurture their local textile industries. But in March 2017, 
The Secondary Materials and Recycled Textile Association, SMART, a trade group representing U.S. used clothing exporters, filed a petition arguing that the increase violated the African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA. Though they contested SMART's accessions, Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda backed down and agreed to roll back the duty increases. But Rwanda refused and as a result joined the ranks of Canada, Mexico and the European Union and China, all of which have been targets of Trump's aggressive trade tactics. Kamanzi says the government would assist affected companies financially, though she declined to give details. When we look at domestic production of clothing, we've actually seen evidence that it has grown which means that there is a correlation between discouraging second-hand clothing and increase in domestic production, which was the basis of the decision that we made. So it's actually, the evidence is actually showing that it's paying off. So we should just stick to um, growing our domestic production, which is what our leaders decided at the ESC when the decision was made. The second point that I wanted to also add on that is that Rwanda remains very open to uh, engaging the United States, as well as any other country, on... Um, on, on mutually beneficial trade um, engagement. Despite the suspension, Rwanda will maintain its other duty-free benefits under the African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA, America's flagship trade legislation for Africa. Tens of thousands of migrants have traveled through the Nigerian city of Agadez on a journey across the Sahel to Europe in search of a better life. But a European Union crackdown on migration has seen migrants' numbers drop lately and has left some migrants stranded in the town, unable to continue with their journey or to return back home. Lamin traveled from Gambia to Niger's southern town, Nagadis, in the hope that smugglers will get him across the Sahara Desert and on to Europe, where he was hoping to find better opportunities. But now, he's stranded in Nagadis. For years, the ancient town was a key stop for West Africans traveling north, mostly young men, fleeing poverty at home. But since the European Union cracked down on migration last year, the number of migrants arriving here has significantly dropped. Unfortunately, we cannot go further and we cannot go back because the road is now stressed. Things are not easy. Some people are in prison in Libya, even in Agadez here. And the situation of the police for the we, the immigrants, is getting stressed with us, you know. He is not feeling well today, and he's come for a checkup at a temporary clinic supported by the International Committee of the Red Cross. The organization provides basic health care for migrants in Agadis as part of humanitarian efforts. Niger, under European Union pressure, started arresting smugglers and posted soldiers across the desert in 2016. Usman, who comes from Senegal, used to make a living in Nagadis, recruiting potential candidates for people smugglers. He now works at construction sites. Before, we had no problems. It was our job, our workplace. We didn't have to hide. The police didn't come after us. But that work is no longer an option. There are too many problems. We are hounded. Babuka. An old friend of Usman's has lived there since 2013. He used to help migrants make travel arrangements. Like Usman, he decided to change his way of life when the situation changed and now lives with his family in the city, where he raises livestock. We used to help drivers find people wanting to travel, but now that's forbidden. We had to adapt and accept any work that came along to look after our families. No matter how long a tree trunk lies in the water, it will never turn into a crocodile. No matter how many years I spent here, I'm still a migrant. Niger is one of several West African countries where the European Union has struck or is seeking deals to cut migration, offering development aid in exchange for tighter borders, and threatening trade consequences if there is a failure to cooperate. But critics say smugglers are unlikely to settle for meager profits and will likely take up other criminal activity. And that's it on Network Africa today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm to meet up with Fagbini.